Hey, Forrest here. Nothing like getting paid. And with ICCU's mobile app, I can deposit checks or accept Zelle payments so the money hits my account fast. I just wish there was an app for mowing the rest of these lawns. Right now, Lithia Ford of Boise is buying used vehicles. How much you want for the SUV? Uh, I don't know. Well, Lithia Ford will give you more than that. How much more? More than you think. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking you might get even more than that. See how much more you can get at Lithia Ford of Boise. When it comes to concrete, we've got you covered. Ropaint.com offers custom concrete coating services for your garage, business, warehouse, and more. And we do it in one day. We are your complete concrete coating solution. It's time for the Lithia Ford of Boise Post Game Show from Bronco Nation News. We're breaking down the game with highlights, interviews, analysis, and most importantly, you. Give your thoughts on the game in the YouTube chat or Facebook comments, and we'll include the best ones on the show. Check out LithiaFordBoise.com to view their full inventory of vehicles, or check them out at 8853 West Fairview in Boise. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Now let's head out and join BJ Rains for the Lithia Ford of Boise Post Game Show from Bronco Nation News. Well, there's the scene at Albertson Stadium just a couple of minutes ago. The Boise State football team celebrating a 27 to 19 win over Air Force. The Broncos putting themselves in position for a conference championship. They'll wait and see what happens against UNLV tomorrow, but it's looking good for the Boise State football team to be playing in the conference championship game on December 2nd. We will get back to that, but uh, we got Abe Jackson here. We're going to talk a little basketball. Kent Riddle is going to join us in a few minutes as well. A lot of stuff. Oh, the ball almost came. Abe, I've never been more ready in my life there for the catch. Abe Jackson's here. This is going to be fun. We're doing a combo basketball football. We'll talk some basketball right now, Abe. Uh, tough one last night, 82-75, and now a big opportunity to bounce back tonight. Yeah, and, you know, the Broncos have been in this situation before. Last year at the Myrtle Beach, maybe one of their worst games under Coach Rice, scoring 42 points against uh, Charlotte and then coming back and going 2-1 and one in that tournament. So, you know, it's uh, they've been here before, and uh, they're going to need to need to change some things. What needs to change? I think the point guard play. I think that is what really does need to change. I mean, against Clemson, the three point guards for Boise State, for Boise State, Anderson, Rice, and Whiting scored 13 points, and the two guards for Clemson scored 37. Against Virginia Tech, the three Boise State guards scored 19, and the guards for Virginia Tech scored 37 as well. So our guards aren't able to really score, and they're also not able to guard that well right now either. So, and I think what we're seeing is missing a guy like Marcus Shaver, someone who can break the defense down on the dribble, get into the paint, and then make a decision, either take it in yourself or kick it out to some open shots. Because Boise State, as of right now, doesn't really look like they have anybody that just can take someone off the dribble. It's back down moves from your guards. It's back down moves from your forwards. It's back down moves from your from your post. And then the offense runs from there. So they're going to have to figure something out to uh, to get more pressure in the paint by dribble drives. Again, we'll talk some football in a little bit after the win over Air Force. Kent Riddle will join us. But we're talking basketball. we got about four minutes left. And all of a sudden, a, a three-point game here. This game's going to come down to the wire. Virginia Tech, uh, you know, up on Iowa State right now, showing that they're a quality team. Um, but you mentioned the point guard play and the problems there. And we saw later in the game, Boise State obviously went to Max Rice at the point guard spot. That bigger lineup had all three of those big guys, Stanley, Martin, and Degenhardt, in the game together. What did you make of that five? Because I thought at times uh, it was a big mismatch having all that size. Yeah, and it can be. Um, you know, you, you're going to have the uh, mismatch on the offensive end, but then you might have a little mismatch on the defensive end because you're not going to be as quick as you might be. But you have those big guys inside that are guarding if the guards do get beat on penetration. So I think you might see that big lineup again. But also the Broncos just need to take care of the ball. Um, you know, they had uh, multiple multiple games and double-digit turnovers. And then uh, against Virginia Tech, I think it was 16 or 17 turnovers in the game that uh, Virginia Tech forced. So if you're going to go to a bigger lineup, you got to make sure to take care of the ball. What do you make of Max Rice, man? It's been a little bit of a slow start to the season for him. Did have the six turnovers last night. Hit a big three. I thought was going to really turn the game. But for the most part, we, this isn't the Max Rice that uh, we saw for a lot of last season. It's just been a struggle to get some get some uh, open looks to fall. Yeah, and I, I think 
well, one thing is that Boise State's been playing some really good teams. I mean, San Francisco was a good team, and then Clemson, of course, probably an NCAA team. Virginia Tech, they could be in the finals of this tournament if they uh, pull out this win here against Iowa State. So two really good teams, and and I think when we talk about creating your own shot and the Broncos are missing that, I don't really think Max has that in his game. And if you put someone really quick on him who can fight through screens and, and strong and fight through screens, then it's going to be tough for him to get some looks. And I think that's what we've seen against Clemson and Virginia Tech on when they're defending Max. You know, big talk, and I wrote about it in my story, that the 2-2 two and two record and a lot of fans after the game on our postgame show, uh, some of the naysayers were already kind of really disappointed and so much for all the hype this year and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, you look at the 2-2 two and two record in the last couple of years, they lost, you know, last year they lost to Charlotte and they lost to uh, South Dakota State. Uh, the year before, they lost to UC Irvine, Cal Bakersfield. I mean, now these are going to be quad one, quad two type losses. Obviously, you'd like to win tonight, try to find a way to win on Sunday and leave here two and two. But uh, I think this two and two does feel a lot different. Well, what an emotional roller coaster those naysayers must live on. Man, two games into a 32 game season or four games into a 32 game season and all of a sudden the season's over and we're not as good as we thought we were and even though you're playing maybe the hardest opening schedule in the history of Boise State basketball being on the road here at this tournament Clemson and then going to a quote neutral site against St. Mary's so I really don't I really don't know if uh if I would say that the season is over right now at two and two because of such tough opponents that they've played. Now if they were two and two against a bunch of no names and were home games, that would be different. But uh, uh I'm I'm still high on this team even though they've lost the last two. Again, we'll talk football here in a couple minutes. Kent Riddle is gonna join us, break down that twenty seven nineteen win for the football team, but we got Abe Jackson for another minute or two. Uh VCU, old coach Ryan Odom. Yeah. Little history there. Uh, they got uh, you know a couple of players as well that he brought from uh, Utah yep. State. Yep, it's going to be probably a little bit of a similar offense. You don't change a whole lot when you go somewhere else as the coach, but it won't look exactly the same because I think this team is much more athletic than some of the Utah State teams in the past. They might not be as fundamentally sound as those Utah State teams were, but uh, they do have a familiar face as a player as well, and Max Shulga is one of VCU's leading scorers and a really good three-point shooter as well. So. Um, I do like Boise State's chances in this game, though. I, I really do. I, I think they're. I think they're going to get VCU tonight. What do they need to come out and do to make that happen? Well, one, they need to take care of the ball. I mean, the other teams not only have been forcing turnovers on the Broncos, but been making the Broncos pay, getting a bucket or a point on almost every turnover that are, that is forced. So take care of the ball, and then I think that the guards, the guards, just need to play better. I don't know how you do it. I'm sure the coaches see everything that we're seeing as well, but I'll bet they change some things up at the guard position or how they run with the guards because you can't just rely on back downs from every single position that you have to get buckets. You'll be hearing Abe Jackson in 12 minutes over on 670 KBOI. You can watch the game on ESPNU. Turn down the sound. Listen to Abe and Leonard at uh, 6 o'clock Mountain Time for the tip-off. Boise State and VCU in a big one. Abe, appreciate your time, man, and good luck on the call. Yeah, man. There he is, Abe Jackson. We appreciate him. We will transition from basketball pregame to football postgame. We will. Whoa, Abe. Abe almost knocked over the. Uh, uh oh. Nice Abe trip there. Almost knocked us off the air. You all right, Abe? We'd almost injured Abe Jackson here on the. Uh, he just knocked over our microphone. But uh, all right, I think we're good. We uh, we survived uh, Abe Jackson. He is uh, still with us and uh, he's going to be okay. So big one for Boise State. They win this game. The final score was. As you see Buzz Williams, the Texas A&M coach, walk behind us. Boise State football, 27-19. Get your comments in, your thoughts in. This was the scene at Albertson Stadium all oh, about uh, 10 minutes ago. The Broncos celebrating a huge win in their home finale. The Broncos finish off the regular season with a win on senior night. And now Boise State will wait tomorrow in the computer rankings to see what happens with UNLV. If UNLV wins, it doesn't matter. Boise State's in. And they'll head to Las Vegas next week for the championship. If UNLV loses, we'll go to the computer rankings. Boise State's still probably in a good spot, but we will find out tomorrow. You saw the uh, joy, the excitement on the uh, face of uh, Spencer Danielson at the end of the game. Just a really cool moment. Happy for him. Happy for this team. And you heard it on the broadcast. I believe it would only be the second time ever in college football history that an interim coach will lead his team to a conference championship if Boise State wins next weekend. Uh, USC, I believe, in 2015 was the other school that did that. So a uh, chance for Boise State to make some incredible history here uh, if they're able to get into that championship game. So go ahead and uh, let us know your thoughts on the game, your player of the game.
And we're talking some football here. Kent Riddle is going to join us. I need to make sure I have the right email that I sent it to for Kent. He's going to jump on. We'll talk a little football here. There's still three minutes left in this game, by the way. And once this game goes final, we will uh, – once this game goes final, we will uh, be able to show you Boise State taking the floor for warm-ups. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's get our first commercial break out of the way. 90 seconds. I'm going to get Kent Riddle in here. Get your uh, thoughts on the football game in. Let us know your player of the game. We're talking Boise State football after a big win over Air Force. We're back in 90 seconds on Bronco Nation News. All Bronco Nation News broadcasts come from the Cutwater Spirits Canned Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of premix premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Spirits, perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Our title sponsor is RowPaint.com. For all your commercial, industrial, residential painting needs, check out RowPaint.com. Don't forget about their concrete coatings. Transform that ugly concrete slab on your back patio in your garage in just one day. Contact RowPaint.com for a free estimate today. The official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics and our title sponsor at Bronco Nation News is RowPaint.com. Idaho Central Credit Union has been helping members achieve financial success for more than 80 years. There's an ICCU branch on almost every corner, but the closest is in your pocket with free e-branch mobile and online banking. See why more than 500,000 members love ICCU and join one in four Idahoans by making the switch today at ICCU.com. Since 1984, Ridley's Family Markets has prided itself on being a hometown food and drug store that employed value members of the local community. Ridley's Family Markets has 13 locations in the state of Idaho and many more in the surrounding states. Download the new Ridley's app to your smartphone, get savings up to 40% off at the checkout line, and find a location near you at shopridleys.com. Former Bronco Matt Bauscher is once again the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. No home is too big or too small for Matt and his team. Let them fulfill all your real estate needs at BauscherRealEstate.com. All right, Kent Riddle is uh, logging in, so we'll have Kent Riddle joining us here shortly. Who would have thought we'd be in this position, folks? Boise State winning a you know two games to finish the regular season, I guess three in a row when you count the New Mexico game, but two games under interim coach Spencer Danielson now at uh, – Seven and five on the season. They have, uh, I guess I can't say assured themselves of a winning season. They've assured themselves of a non-losing season. They could lose the championship and lose a bowl game, finish 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, but uh, still a chance to win a Mountain West title and still a chance to win uh, nine games if you win a bowl game. So I ask you this question to kick us off. Has your opinion on Spencer Danielson changed based on the last two weeks? Spencer Danielson in all likelihood getting Boise State into a championship game a win at Utah State on the road when you were only favored by four, and a home win over Air Force in front of a sellout crowd on senior night when the defense needed to make a couple big stops late in the game, and they did just that. By the way, uh, Padula, huge three-pointer shocker there for Virginia Tech. We saw plenty of that last night. But uh, what are your thoughts on Spencer Danielson and his candidacy to be the uh, full-time head coach? Have your thoughts changed based on what you saw in the last uh, couple of games it hasn't changed for me, I'll tell you that. I, I, uh, I've i been saying all along, I think Spencer Danielson would make an excellent coach. I tried to uh, – uh, we're going to go back to the other camera here. Sorry about that. I was trying to switch cameras, and uh, there we go. All right, we'll worry about it later. Uh, I, it has not changed for me. I think Spencer Danielson would be an, an excellent choice. I've said it numerous times, and I think that uh, some of you guys hopefully are, are coming on board with this. They're going to do some more interviews. We'll see where this thing goes. But if they win a championship next Saturday, first of all, I don't think you can name a head coach this week. I know some of you think, oh, Sunday or Monday, they're going to name the head coach. What would that do to the team morale, who, again, I think a lot of them want Spencer Danielson to get this job? There is no way you can name an inter you can name the full-time head coach before the championship game. I would be stunned, if it unless it's Spencer Danielson. If you promote Spencer Danielson, that's great, and that's probably a huge bonus going into the title game. But if you are hiring somebody else, I don't think there is any way you can announce that before the championship game. I think that would be a big mistake for Jeremiah Dickey and Boise State, and I think that would probably uh, really hurt their chances of winning that championship game because I think a lot of these players are rolling right now with Spencer Danielson. They want Spencer Danielson to get this full-time gig, and I'm not sure how that would sit or play if you announce somebody else as the head coach right after this guy got them into the championship game. So if they're not hiring Spencer Danielson, I think you wait till after the after the bowl, after the the uh, championship game to announce it, maybe that Monday or Tuesday or later that week. Uh, I also think it's going to be kind of awkward, though. 
you win a championship game, Spencer Danielson holding the trophy in Vegas, confetti falling, and two days later you're announcing that he wasn't good enough to be your head coach. Uh, this is putting Jeremiah Dickey in a very, very uh, interesting predicament here. Another huge three, by the way, from Padula. Unbelievable. I'm seeing exactly what I saw last night a minute ago. By the way, that uh, Virginia Tech team, which a lot of you thought was a bad loss last night for Boise State and a lower you know, ring uh, ACC team, somebody was saying, uh, they're about to beat uh, Iowa State, who's number 17 at Ken Palm coming into the game. So uh, this is going to be a huge win for Virginia Tech, and it's obviously going to help Boise State's computer numbers. Virginia Tech heading into the championship game tomorrow with a nice win over uh, Iowa State. So, again, Kel uh, Kent Riddle is going to join us here shortly. We're going to continue to talk about this game. Again, maybe I'm wrong on this, but I do not think – if you're going to name somebody else the head coach, I don't think you can do it till after the championship game unless it is Spencer Danielson. I could see uh, if they've seen enough Monday or Tuesday, They uh, maybe Sunday or Monday, they say, you know what, we've seen what we need to see, and we're going to you know, give the, the team a jolt going into the championship game. But um, I think you're probably looking at that week after the bowl game – or excuse me, I'm sorry, after the championship game for them to announce that head coach right about when that transfer portal opens on December 4th. I could see them doing it on Sunday or Monday. Um, Dickey is not influenced by the press. Uh, not sure if anybody said he was, Henry. I uh, totally understand that. Um, let's see. Player of the game was Danielson. Does JD consider player input becoming recruits or transfers? Uh, I think he has to. I think he's talking to players. I think he's doing his research. He's doing his due diligence. I mean, they're obviously traveling around. Uh, to some other, uh, you know, doing some off-site interviews. They said in their little uh, update there's more interviews to come this weekend. So they're obviously doing their uh, homework on this, their due diligence, and they're making a national search. But, again, I, I think we're getting a little closer to potentially that, that video appearing of, of uh, Jeremiah Dickey, uh, you know, saying to the team, I want to introduce you to your new head coach and Spencer Danielson walking around the corner uh, and, the, and the team room going nuts. Uh, I, I think that vision is becoming certainly possible with each day. Um, two huge wins. And again, Spencer Danielson got a little lucky. Would we be feeling the same way about Spencer Danielson if this was just a, a win to go seven and five and they were already eliminated from the, the race? Uh, maybe not. So I think, uh, I think certainly that the circumstances, New Mexico beating Fresno, Air Force losing to Hawaii. I mean, certainly the circumstances of this have played into this and made things uh, a little uh, a little nicer for Spencer Danielson here. There's no doubt about it. But um, I also think that uh, Spencer Danielson has taken advantage of it. He's done what he needed to do. They're in the uh, position to play for a conference championship in all in all likelihood here. And so uh, we'll see what happens. But tomorrow is the uh, UNLV San Jose game. I think you're all aware of this. But if UNLV wins. That's it. Boise State at UNLV for the title next Saturday. That is a 1 p.m. game, Mountain Time, noon on uh, Big Fox. And by the way, uh, Allegiant Stadium is hosting the Pac-12 championship Friday night. And then 12 hours later, they'd be hoping, hosting the Mountain West championship at noon on Saturday. That would be a quick uh, quick turnaround uh, for them. But uh, they, they've said that they can do it, and they're going to plan to host. Uh, so I think that is the uh, that's the current plan. And so... Um, I think that'd be great. It'd be awesome. NFL Stadium, Mountain West Championship down there in Vegas. I think it'd be really cool. And I think that uh, certainly that is uh, in the cards now. Now, again, I, if Boise State wins, or Boise State wins, so if UNLV wins, it's set. That's it. If San Jose State wins, it goes to a computer ranking system, which Boise State is currently ahead of. We'll see what happens. I think it would still be enough for Boise State to hang on. Um, we'll have to wait and see just, just to get the you know exact computer rankings on Sunday morning. Uh, but I think Boise State's in a, a pretty good spot to uh, to play for a conference championship a week from a week from uh, a week from tomorrow. Pretty pretty incredible, as I said earlier. If you're just joining us, this would only be the second, according to the, the broadcast today, second time in uh, I believe college football history that an interim coach would lead his team to a conference championship. It happened obviously with uh, USC in 2015, I believe, and then uh, was that Clay Helton in 2015? I forget who that was. Uh, and then uh, now you have it with uh, potentially potentially Spencer Danielson uh, here next week. So I don't know. You guys tell me if I'm wrong. I just think if you have Spencer Danielson holding the trophy, confetti falling next week, you really think two days later Jeremiah Dickey's going to be able to announce someone else as the head coach? Uh, I don't know. I, I, it's, Spencer Danielson and the Broncos are making this really, really, um, really difficult for, for Jeremiah Dickey. It, 
it might not play well in the locker room if they win a conference championship and all of a sudden somebody else is named the head coach a couple days later. So we'll see what happens. Jeremiah Dickey says he's, you know, going far and far and wide. Um, but, I, I mean, it, it, it's uh, – by the way, they're playing Enter Sandman here, the uh, entrance for the Virginia Tech football team. And I wish I could show you this, but the entire Virginia Tech fans, several hundred of them, are uh, jumping and going crazy and singing – as it looks like uh, Virginia Tech is uh, about to uh, win this one, and they're going to advance to the championship game uh, to play uh, Florida Atlantic tomorrow. Florida Atlantic, Virginia Tech. Who would have thought that in your championship game? Uh, Kent Riddle's trying to uh, – Kent Riddle's having trouble dialing in, so we'll try to get that figured out here shortly. Uh, let's see. Odd shaped ball. When it bounces your way, you take it. Uh, Clay Hilton. Uh, let's see. Boise did not play very well. May hurt them in some of the polls. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We're going to try this camera again. See if we, uh, fix the, uh, no, we didn't really fix it there. I don't know what's going on with the, uh, what is going on with our, uh, camera, but uh, let's see here. Let's talk about Spencer, the great pregame speech. Got me absolutely hyped. One more game. I didn't see that, Grand Tetons. Not sure uh, where that was or where you uh, saw that from, but I, I, I did not uh, I did not see that. Um, trying to fix this camera here so once that game ends, we can put that on the screen for you and show you. Uh, but there is uh, 16 seconds left, and then Boise State will take the court. Boise State is going to be warming up at the other end tonight, so unfortunately I won't be able to show you a ton of the uh, – Warm-ups for Boise State because they're at the other end. You're going to see VCU warming up. But uh, Logan says, did anyone see Dickey in the end zone after the last touchdown? No, I didn't. So what did what happened? If anybody else saw it, please let me know what uh, Jeremiah Dickey did after the last touchdown. Unless it's an upper tier like Chris Peterson or Kellen Moore, I think promoting Spencer Danielson is the most seamless option. Um, let's see. Grand Tetons is nervous. Because uh, most interim coaches don't end up doing very well. That's a fair assessment. Um, let's see what else we got here. Logan agrees. Nope, can't do it till after the conference championship game. That was the most complete game, uh, according to uh, Benson Johnson. Let's see. 27-19 was your final. Boise State, 409 total yards in this game. They had 228 passing, 181 on the ground. Taylor Green played pretty well, except he had the two interceptions. He was 13 of 17. So only two balls that Taylor Green threw tonight hit the ground. 13 were completed to Boise State players. Two were uh, completed to uh, Air Force players. He did have the two interceptions, but he was 13 of 17, 228 yards, the touchdown and two interceptions. How about Ashton Genty and his return? He becomes the sixth player in Boise State history. That's right, only six players in Boise State history to have at least 100 receiving yards and 100 rushing yards in the same game. So huge game from Ashton Genty, 14 carries, 107 yards, and a touchdown. Also had five catches for 118 yards and a touchdown. That 75-yard touchdown was a huge play early in the game uh, for Boise State on the uh, screen pass from Taylor Green. He juked a guy. Um, um, let's see here. Kent Riddle's trying to connect, and he's having trouble, folks. He's at the James, and uh, he's having a little trouble there, so we're trying to trying to help him connect. Uh, totally different energy about this team since Andy left. Never seen something like this. Uh, yeah, totally agree. Totally agree uh, with this one. And, uh, man, VCU's got some big dudes. VCU is an athletic team as they uh, take the court here. We'll show you uh, VCU uh, taking the court. And uh, we're though on the post game show. This is also a pre game show. You see Boise State taking the floor there in the white uniforms down at the other end. We'll see if we can uh, show you Boise State warming up in the white uniforms at the other end of the court. Boise State and VCU coming up here in about 25 minutes in a big game for the Boise State basketball team. The timeout with nine seconds left in the half. I don't know, man. I, I didn't understand that at all. There was 27 seconds left when the third down play ended. If you wanted to try to get the ball back or make them punt it, call the timeout right away with 27 seconds left. 
when you wait till nine seconds left, there was really no reason at that point for Air Force not to go for it. If Air Force didn't get it, there was only going to be three or four seconds left, and Boise State was not in field goal range. So uh, you made the decision very easy for Air Force to go for that uh, once you called timeout with nine seconds left. So I didn't understand that either. I said it on Twitter. It seemed a little odd. It did bite them because it gave three points to Air Force. Uh, all obviously didn't bite them in terms of the game because they still won the game, but I thought that was uh, a little interesting uh, there. Uh, let's see here. Walking by the walking behind the end zone right when Jensi ran in, J.D. slapped his shoulder. It was cool to see. Um, let's see. Any game you come away with a uh, win and something to learn is a great thing, no doubt about it. Um, I do agree with this. I mean, Air Force quarterbacks were very, very depleted tonight, so you didn't have uh, – a lot going for Air Force offensively, um, and Boise State definitely took advantage of that. I thought the defense played really, really well. Uh, let's look at some of the defensive stats tonight for Boise State. Alexander Tubner, a career-high 14 tackles. That's right, 14 tackles for Alexander Tubner tonight. I thought he had a huge game for Boise State, and uh, he, he was a big reason why Boise State won. DJ Schramm had seven tackles. Had uh, six for Rodney Robinson. Oladipo had six as well. You had the uh, interception there, which is a huge play for Kanohi Kaniho to end the game. And just the excitement on Spencer Danielson's face uh, kind of said it all there, how excited he was. And how about after the 52-yard field goal? I thought after that 52-yard field goal, you saw Spencer Danielson running and chest bumping with uh, Jonah Dulmas. You didn't see anything like that from Andy Avalos during his time here. Uh, just the emotion on the sidelines. Even when Prince Strawn caught like a 15-yard first down when Boise State was trying to run out the clock, you saw Spencer Danielson like running down and pumping him up and you know getting all exciting on the sidelines. So um, I thought we just see an energy that we don't usually see from the head coach here on the sidelines. And uh, again, what else can you say? Two and zero with Spencer Danielson. Three and zero here down the stretch, and Boise State is a UNLV win away. They may get there anyway with the computer rankings, but it would be assured of a trip to the conference championship game with a win over uh, UNLV with a win over uh, San Jose State uh, tomorrow. So we are here at uh, the State Farm Fieldhouse in Orlando, Florida, and we're getting ready for the basketball game. We're talking football as well. We're taking your comments on both. Need more Benefield. Not sure what was going on with him to, uh, today. Tubner had a great game. We need your player of the game. Give us your uh, give us your Taco Bell player of the game. We'll get to that here in a few minutes. Your Taco Bell player of the game on the football side. I thought give us an offensive and a defensive guy. I thought uh, Ashton Genty is a candidate. Certainly uh, Tubner's a candidate. I thought uh, Andrew Simpson had a big game as well. So uh, I thought that. Uh, Certainly, uh, you know, there were a lot of candidates, um, but I think that uh, let's see, I think we get in over Utah State regardless unless San Jose smashes them. I would probably agree with that. I think Boise State's in a pretty good spot for this one uh, regardless. So uh, keep getting your comments in. We're having fun here on a uh, football-basketball combo show. 20 minutes on the clock. We'll talk a little basketball. We'll talk some more football. We'll keep this thing rolling. Back in 90 seconds. Don't go anywhere unless you're going to get a cut water or some Taco Bell. And we'll talk to you real soon. Don't go anywhere. 90 seconds. We'll keep the football talk going. Celebrate, Bronco Nation. You're uh, probably going to the conference championship, and now you got a big basketball game tonight against VCU. We'll try to keep the good times rolling here from Orlando. Back in 90 seconds on Bronco Nation News. Bronco Nation News is sponsored by Tommy Alquist and Ball Ventures Alquist, Idaho's premier commercial real estate development company. BVA projects specialize in office, retail, flex, medical, and industrial spaces located at some of the most strategic and visible locations in the Valley. Need a developer? Looking for new space? Think BVA. At BVA, we are Idaho's developer. The Nicolaysen family and SON management have proudly been operating Taco Bell restaurants in and around the Treasure Valley since 1969. One of the first to make a seven-figure donation to the Lyle Smith Society, they've also stepped up their support at Boise State Athletics with the Taco Bell Men's and Women's Basketball Endowed Scholarships. The Nicolaysen family and SON management have committed at least $310,000 by 2026. Get more information on their financial support at Boise State Athletics and find information on applying to work at Taco Bell at TacoBellWorks.com. Lithia Ford of Boise is a proud supporter of Boise State Athletics and the official car and truck of the Broncos. Lithia Ford of Boise supports Bronco student-athletes through NIL deals, including providing Ford vehicles to Taylor Green and Riley Smith from the football team and Paige Barsh from the volleyball team. Rain's family purchased RF-150 from Lithia Ford, 
Couldn't be happier with the purchase. Check out the all-electric F-150 Lightning or the electric Mustang Mach-E at Lithia Ford and make sure to check out their full inventory of vehicles at LithiaFordBoise.com. The Blue and Orange Store is the perfect spot to get all your gear for your next Bronco game. The Blue and Orange Store has official Nike apparel, including jerseys, shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, hats, and more. Wear what the Broncos wear and get it at the Blue and Orange Store, the second floor of the Boise Town Square Mall, or get free shipping on a $40 order online at theblueandorangestore.com. All right, we're back here on the Lithia Ford of Boise. Combination of a post-game show and a pre-game show. We're talking football. We're talking basketball. I guess I'll switch this over to pregame show for a little bit because we are previewing Boise State basketball coming up against uh, VCU here in about uh, 18 minutes or so. And I can let you know that uh, none of the three officials were officials from last night's game. So there you go. Those of you that didn't like the officiating – None of the three officials are the same, and I can also tell you that I know I don't recognize any of these three officials, which, again, could be a bad thing, but uh, we'll wait and see. So crowd filing in here. Looking forward to this one. Boise's 30-point streak ended. Oh, well, I'll take it. Won't put any Bush Hamden slander. Yeah, only scored 27, man. This offense stinks. How about that? Logan wants some Taco Bell now. Yeah, Logan, go get some Taco Bell. Thank you to SON Management, the Nicolason family. Big supporters of Boise State, big supporters of Bronco Nation News. We appreciate SON management and Taco Bell. And, again, whether it's breakfast, which they serve 7 to 11 a.m., or uh, late night, they got they got all your meals covered at Taco Bell. And, again, they donate a ton of money to men's and women's basketball endowed scholarships at Boise State. So they're they're putting their money where their mouth is, supporting Boise State and uh, supporting us here at BN, BNN. So please go return the favor and uh, grab some Taco Bell. Jacob says, uh, hard to argue with Coach – Spencer Danielson being put on the team's shoulders in the locker room. Way to go, coach. I have not seen that yet. If that video has come out, that's pretty cool. Uh, Josh says, uh, thank you for the great dual coverage. Yeah, we're having fun here. Don't hire off emotions. Um, I get that, but at some point, emotions turn to facts. I mean, I, I get emotional, you know, but at some point, emotions turn to facts. And what Boise State is doing right now, two impressive victories, and then uh, have a chance to hoist the conference championship here you know, do something they haven't done in a long time, I think uh, it's something you seriously have to consider. And, again, I've made my side of it known, and I know Jeremiah Dickey's doing his due diligence. All I'm saying is Spencer Danielson and the Broncos are going to make this tough. They're going to make this extremely tough on uh, Jeremiah Dickey if they if they win a conference championship next week. Uh, Jacob's going uh, Ashton Genty. Genty again, Genty. Genty, Mountain West Player of the Year, Ashton Genty. Wouldn't that be something? The dude missed like three games due to injuries, and he may be the Mountain West Player of the Year. That would certainly be uh, – certainly – I don't know why. What, what Clay is looking at here, there was – I had a – the tiebreaker scenarios are pretty clear, guys. Boise State either gets it if UNLV wins or in the if it's a three-way tie, it goes to the computers for both spots. They do not go to the computers – for the first spot and then go head to head. Boise State would have that over San Jose, but they go all both teams are decided by the computers because they want to have the top two teams playing for a conference championship. So the goal is to have your two best teams playing, give yourself that best chance at a New Year's Six Bowl game. So they change the uh, way they do the conference championship this year, and it's the top two teams in the computer rankings for both spots in the event of a three way tie. So um, I know it's confusing, but that's just the way that Boise State does it. So this is Lithia Ford of Boise. It's a pregame show. It's a postgame show. We're having a lot of fun here. We'll do this again on the postgame show. We'll try to hear from Spencer Danielson, some football players. We'll have Leon Rice live. We'll have some players live. So I uh, hope we can make this a very good day for Boise State if we're able to find a way to get a win over VCU. So this is kind of our combo immediate reaction show. Uh, but, again, we'll do it again postgame. A more extended version. We'll have some uh, player reaction from football and basketball. Uh, we'll have some highlights from the football game as well. Uh, so looks like our man Kent Riddle may have actually figured this out. So we'll get to him in a second once he is uh, settled and ready to go. I see him logging in now. And uh, we'll uh, switch back to post game for a second here while we uh, bring uh, bring Kent in. Kent, I'm going to throw you on screen here. We're going to give this a try. Right. And there he is, uh, Kent Riddle. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? 
we got you going there, man. Uh, you're at the James. I'm, I'm jealous. I want to be uh, having a captain and diet right now and uh, celebrating that Boise State win. I, I looked, I'm i I'm sure it's a festive atmosphere at the James. I am uh, courtside here in Orlando, Florida for the uh, basketball game tonight. But uh, give us your thoughts. Uh, 27-19, Boise State finds a way to win the game, and, and uh, now they're in all likelihood going to a conference championship next week. Yeah, hell of a job. They, You know, I think just the ability to – battle through the adversity, uh, come closer together and, and uh, find a way to win the game. And, you know, I mean, despite the score, I think they they really dominated the game. Uh, could have been a lot worse. Obviously, hey, Air Force hung in there. They, that's the way they play. They make every game tough, every game close. But it was fun, uh, fun atmosphere. Great job by the fans showing up. Uh, basically a sellout, you know, great job by the – administration getting that done so um i think all in all great day for the broncos i was gonna say a, a, a sellout crowd and i was watching the game on tv i mean it sounded loud it sounded energetic and uh they, especially on defense it, it seemed like the crowd was a big factor today absolutely yeah we've got a couple couple more false starts which is always a huge deal in bronco stadium but um yeah i, I mean i defense took the runaway they give up really one explosive run but other than that there was really nothing going force them to throw the ball and uh obviously that's not air force's strength um they hit a few plays here and there but you know if you're going to make them win make them throw to beat you and and i think the defense did early and obviously huge job by you know the uh running backs the old line boise state hit a hit a few pass plays but you know i think the the Ashton Genty on the screen obviously set the tone, but uh, Ashton George, the O-line tight ends, doing a phenomenal job running the ball. Great way to win the game. What did you make of the uh, timeout that Spencer Danielson called with nine seconds left? There was a lot of talk about that in the, at the end of the first half there, and uh, the, the play ended with like 27 seconds left. They let it go down to nine seconds. They call timeout, and then Air Force decides to go for it, and they get a field goal out of it, which uh, kind of changed the game a little bit there, at least at the time. It didn't end up to bite them. Boise State won the game. But as a coach and a guy that's uh, focused on clock management and stuff for hard and been involved in a lot of that uh, – what would you make of uh, – why, why call the timeout there with nine seconds left? Well, I think they were thinking uh, they'd get Air Force stop, call timeout again, and force them to punt and have a chance to block the punt. Why didn't they do that you with know, 20, I mean, 26 hey, seconds, though? I mean, you had 26 seconds. You could even run a play or two on offense then. Yeah. Um, I think they didn't want to give them the chance to drive down the field. You know, I, I don't think they were I, – I think they felt confident they could start – stop Air, uh, Air Force's passing game. Air Force hit a big play and was able to get into field goal position. I mean, hey, every every decision you make isn't going to be 100%, but I think they felt like by running it down to that short of time, Air Force probably handed off. They could tackle them, have a chance to block a punt. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Couple now, in retrospect, I would, I would assume they learned from that and say, like, hey, if we're going to do this, Let's either let it run out or go earlier. What What do you make of uh, the offense tonight? I guess Taylor Green was 13 of 17, did have the two interceptions. Uh, the one there in the red zone, not, didn't see the guy, and uh, that, that, that kept them from getting some points early in the game. But pass for over 200 yards, only four incompletions. Uh, the two interceptions hurt, but what would you make of uh, Taylor Green tonight? I thought Taylor was awesome. They did a great job. Thought he did a great job in the run game. You know, being a threat, uh, pulling it when he had a chance, attacking the edge. But, yeah, I mean, throwing it, anytime you go 13 for 17, you're, you're doing a good job. Obviously, you know, the one interception in the red zone he'd like to have back. The other one, you know, kind of a tough break. But it, uh, I thought he played well. I mean, got to continue to build on that, improve on that. And uh, I think, you know, I mean, I assume at this point they're already thinking about UNLV. Uh, probably got a little bit of scouting going on on San Jose also, um, just in case. But, you know, I, th I think that's one of those things uh, they can build on. 
Yeah, I don't think there's any way. I know they probably have to cover their bases, but I don't see any way that uh, both Boise State and San Jose would pass UNLV in the computer rankings. So I think if Boise State's in, they're going to be playing UNLV. Uh, Boise State just has to hope that uh, San Jose State doesn't blow out UNLV and pass them in the computer rankings. But uh, what, what can you say about Spencer Danielson? Two wins here in his two games, interim head coach. They said on the broadcast, Kent, that uh, boy, he's trying to become the second person ever as interim coach to win a conference championship, you, uh, USC did it in 2015. Uh, but it's pretty rare to have an interim coach come in and now have a chance to win a championship. Uh, what do you make Spencer Danielson and the staff here? Uh, two games, two wins. He's doing a phenomenal job. I mean, he's got uh, he's got good coaches. So I don't I don't imagine there's You know, I think I think they're operating within the structure that they've had all year. Uh, but he's just putting his flavor on it, trying to make it a little bit better. Um, and obviously, it's working. It, it's awesome. Um, but you know, I mean, I think Boise State's a good team, and we're seeing the fruition of, of all their hard work all year. And shoot, I mean, no matter who the head coach is, might might have been about the same. Do we have to give all this credit to Mike Sanford uh, for coming to town and raising the blue chaos flag against New Mexico? Uh, Mike Sanford raises the raises the blue chaos flag in the game right after the loss to Fresno. Boise State has won three games in a row. On the post-game show, we were enjoying some pizza and a few beverages and getting uh, harassed by former players' parents. Uh, we, You guys said... Hey, there is a chance, and you were the one that kind of said it, opening up the show. There's a chance this could happen. I mean, I know a lot of crazy stuff has happened, but uh, it's crazy what can happen in a couple weeks. And I think Mike Sanford deserves a lot of the credit. He got this thing started. <laughs> I would absolutely give Mike the credit, uh, but um, it, also I would like this. I, I would like a comparison between uh, Z today and Mike and see who half staff to me. So, uh, so they also have to pull the uh, optics up and we'll, you know, we can evaluate, but uh, I, I no, believe, you know, I believe there was a, uh, a higher number. I, I didn't see the video, but I heard Jared Zabransky's number got higher. He was up to 112 today. He did have a much bigger crowd and more on the line. I think uh, that was a little unfair advantage for Jared Zabransky, but uh, well, he did. Z, Z said he might not have done. Z said he might not have done as good a job with the flag, but thought the hype job might have been better for the flag. So, uh, those guys can debate that. I, I... your uh, your Wi-Fi is a little spotty, uh, Kent. Uh, I know you're out there on the patio at the James, but uh, your Wi-Fi is a little spotty. We'll we'll get you out of here in a second, Kent. Uh, Tell you're frozen right now, Kent. By the way, I don't know if you can hear me there. There you are. Uh, you're back now. Uh, just your final thoughts. We're gonna let, we'll let you get back to your uh, party there at yeah. the game. Uh, just your your final thoughts. Was he stayed in all likelihood now playing for a conference championship? Two wins uh, under Spencer Daniels and three wins in a row. I mean, they still have a chance to win nine games, Kent. They win the championship in a bowl game. They got a chance to win nine games here. It's pretty crazy. Uh, but just your final thoughts uh, after a, a good day for the Broncos. to do that. I, I think uh, when you're a Bronco, if you take care of your business, you get to play for a championship. And I, I fired up to see the guys do that. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping to be there in Vegas to support them. So uh thought they tremendous job tonight. Offense, defense, special teams. Jonas hit a, uh, another big fig, uh, field goal. So, um, you know, I just – Again, every face tonight was on, on point and fired up to see him do it. Now fired up to see the Broncos win a hoop game. There you go. Yeah, that game is coming up here in five minutes. Uh, tell Barry and everybody to go turn it to ESPNU. And uh, Boise State on, on the floor here. Final warm-ups underway. Kent, uh, don't book your hotel room yet. I got to talk to you. I got a sponsor in Vegas. We can uh, we can maybe hook you and Cameron up with a, a nice rate on a hotel there at Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. So uh, hold off on booking your room, and we'll talk later. But Kent, appreciate it. I know you came out to chat with us from the James there. We really appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. All right, there he is, Kent Riddle. Had some uh, a little bit of uh, Wi-Fi issues there at the end, but we appreciate Kent for joining us. And um, 
Again, Kent Riddle joining us, uh, Boise State. Football wins 27 to 19. And now we uh, turn our final attentions to the basketball team. You see the Broncos out there for final warm-ups, five minutes on the clock. Huge game. Boise State 2-2 two and two on the season, looking for that big marquee win. VCU, a top 100 Ken Palm team. Quality team. This would be a quality game for Boise State. So I see the Deggenharts up there. I see Jace Whiting's dad. I see the Keene family. I see a good amount of players' parents. Brock Rice is in attendance. We'll see if he can uh, – behave behind the bench tonight. I do believe he was the one that got the technical foul. But uh, you see VCU taking the floor. They have some dudes. I'm telling you guys, they have some athletic dudes, and this is not going to be an easy game for Boise State. So looking forward to this one. Should be a lot of fun. Boise State and VCU over on ESPNU. As you see on the clock there, it starts in four minutes. So uh, enjoy the game, folks. We appreciate all you guys for checking us out. We're going to be have a long mega hour plus post game edition. You can hear from Spencer Danielson. You can hear from some football players. We'll continue the football discussion. You'll hear Leon Rice live, some players live. After the game, switch on over, and we'll have full coverage of basketball and football on an extended special edition of the Lithia Ford of Boise post game show. Coming up in just a little bit, Boise State and VCU. Enjoy the game. And then we'll talk to you on the post game. BJ Reigns again live at the State Farm Fieldhouse. Thank you to all of our sponsors. Please go support them. Thank you to all of our subscribers. If you want to be one, we'd love to have you. 50 bucks, BNN50 deals, the promo code. But uh, Boise State VCU, a big one coming up on the Constellation bracket. You can watch it on ESPNU. And then right when the game ends, about five minutes after the game, come join us on the BNN Lithia Ford to Boise post game show. Coach Rice live, some players live, and then we'll have plenty of football reaction too, Spencer Danielson and others. So Boise State wins it. Enjoy it, folks. Now grab another cut water and settle in for some Boise State hoops. Full coverage on my Twitter account and coming after the game as well with my full story at bronconationnews.com.